model steam engines and boilers, part 49. Drilling the mounting holes in the main bearings, drilling and threading the pedestal, then fixing the outer bearing in place. This series, called How to Build a Model Steam Engine, is for my Patreon supporters only. The full-length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see, but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job. Why is it a good idea to join Patreon? Firstly, you get to see the videos a few months before everyone else. You can download my ebook, The Essential Guide to Miniature Steam, which is completely free, and you can watch the entire series of How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which is over five hours of instructions. I would like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I could not make these videos without your kind help and support. This is a critical episode in the series. It's the one where I drill the mounting holes in the top of the pedestal and the main bearings. Before that, I'm going to drill the holes in the pedestal to mount it to the baseboard. And you really have to be careful when you do this. The first thing that you have to realise is you're drilling from underneath, so you can't see where the hole really needs to be. And it's very important that once the holes are drilled in the pedestal, they are exactly in the middle when you look at the pedestal from the top. These two felt tip pen marks are a continuation of the side of the pedestal, and just to make it slightly more difficult, the sides of the pedestal are not parallel. Once I double checked that the marks were exactly in the right place, it was over to the drilling machine to drill the holes, starting with a centre drill. I took my time with this job and made sure that the centre drill was positioned exactly on the cross of the scribed lines on the felt tip pen mark. After piloting the holes with the centre drill, I used a 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter drill to drill them all the way through, but this is not the finished size. This is a good tip really, use a smaller drill to start with and then if you've drilled the hole slightly in the wrong place, by using a needle file you can change the position of the hole and then drill through it with a larger drill bit. That's the easy bit out of the way, now the job gets slightly more difficult. I need to drill two mounting holes in each of these gunmetal main bearings. I have to mention that with this job you have to be accurate. There is zero tolerance on this job because the bolts that are supplied with the kit are very large and if you don't get these holes in the right place they're going to look terrible. If you drill in the wrong place here you really do have a problem. And as with the pedestal I drill the holes smaller to start with. If the holes are drilled slightly off you can use a round needle file to correct them and then re-drill them the proper size. And here, of course, I'm using a flat needle file just to flatten off the mountings. In the 50-odd years that I've been playing with steam engines and working with them, my hole drilling has definitely improved. It's maybe not 100% perfect, but the holes are in the middle. Don't forget these are castings, and they're not exactly perfect to start with. After a final re-drilling and resizing of the holes, I gave the whole thing a final clean up once again using the flat needle file. Once upon a time, Stuart Victoria models were supplied with main bearings that were big enough to machine to the finished size. They were wider than this at one time, but now they are 3 eighths of an inch and the finished size is 3 eighths of an inch. And now for Zero Tolerance Part 2. I'm going to drill two holes in the top of the pedestal and thread them 2BA, and the tapping size drill is 5 30 seconds of an inch. These holes in the top of the pedestal need to be in exactly the same place as the holes on the main bearing. To find the position of the holes on the top of the pedestal, I use the deep hole marker through the holes in the bearing, and then I scribed around the bearing hole to get a ring inside the black dot. As usual, I started the job using a centre drill. Then he used a 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter drill to drill the holes 3 8 down into the pedestal. Then I threaded the holes by hand but still in the drilling machine to ensure accurate alignment. You have to be careful with this though because rotating a chuck in a drilling machine is not as sensitive as using a small tap wrench and it would not be good at this stage to break off the tap. 
After threading both of the holes, I returned the assembly to the bench and fitted the top bearing. However, these are not the bolts that you're supposed to use. These are some of my stock bolts, the 2BA, but they are one size smaller. These bolts look great, they're exactly the right size for the job, but unfortunately the bolts that you get with the kit are a lot bigger. Look at these. Now you see what I mean about zero tolerance. If the hole is not in the middle, you have a big problem. First of all, the bolt will not go in the hole because it fouls the side of the casting, and even if it did, it would be off-center and look truly horrendous. Thankfully, I didn't get the holes in the wrong place, and once these bolts are tightened, they should look fine. If not, a trifle over scale. And here's the finished job. The outer main bearing is now bolted to the pedestal, and with the help of the holes in the bottom of the pedestal, which are also in the middle, I will be able to neatly mount this onto the baseboard. For me, the problem with engineering is the fact that it is an accumulator. The more work you do on the part, the more disastrous any errors would become. Luckily here, everything seems to be okay for the moment. I still need to drill the holes in the bed to mount the other bearing. What I'm doing at the moment, though, is loosely assembling everything, just to see what it looks like. Even at this stage, if I hadn't got the bearing squared onto the top of the pedestal, the angle of the crankshaft would be wrong, and I wouldn't be able to mount the other bearing on the main bed. I need to make the baseboard and the main support for the engine's bed. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.